Hey people, welcome to the Dodger Dave channel. If you're seeing this on YouTube, it would be my YouTube channel, my main channel. Who knows where else I'll show these videos because YouTube shadow bans me. So it's November 12th. I got the AC DC cranked right now. This is the day six years ago. This is the anniversary, the sixth anniversary, meaning the day when the dates and the days line up as well. Tuesday, November 12th, when my wife and our two children disappeared. The console's pretty clean. I went into the campgrounds and got a bunch of toilet paper to clean up the mess of tears and snot ubiquitously mixed together as I broke down this morning. Then I got a notification from a girl I'm Facebook friends with that doesn't like to hear or get messages that say good morning because it reminds her of when her fiance dumped her or yeah used to say that and she was devastated <coughs> She times, she stamps it, photographs these pictures of it happening yesterday at 10.22 on Monday. So everything matches my six years ago calendar. And then, of course, 10.22 was the date that my wife put on the divorce papers she sent me 10 months later, 11 months later actually sent me in January. She allowed me to have Christmas and get the Christmas cards she sent with pictures of our children and a message from her to turn to Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So... So this girl that sends, she didn't just send me a link. It's just she as a Facebook friend and all of her thousands of friends see this. But it's time stamped with 1022 and date stamped with 1111, November 11th. The last day I saw, last night I went to bed with a family. Also... Last year, the night that Dodger Girl and I decided that we would be married. Which was kind of a short-term thing, but we're still good friends. Maybe just not a match made in heaven. I'm super fortunate to have her friendship and love and kindness. But all these dates get stamped and sent to me. All this stuff happens. All these numbers blend together on these days in ways that are beyond coincident, coincidence or, or probability numerically. Yesterday which would have been the anniversary of our making some some were they vows were they statements of feelings we were going to do it at 11, 11 on 11, 11, and then she had to go to the bathroom. I think that was symbolic. 
Went to take her to the full moon Friday the 13th, 913 in the 9,000 block in the 1300 block in the ninth section in the 13th row the Led Zeppelin tribute and concert in Salt Lake and we didn't get to it and so yesterday on 9-11 excuse me on 11-11 this date Apparently, I completed the 666th transaction with a particular company I have been doing business with, that I started doing business with in Salt Lake when I was with Dodger Girl. So they sent me, they sent me this nice congratulatory thing that's with a 666 on it and an inverted pentagram. Uh, and said something about what a magnificent devil I am for doing 666 transactions with them. I took a break at that point from that endeavor. I sent a screenshot of it out to Dodger Girl and two of my daughters started up later and the next customer I helped I went to their address it had four digits the first three were can you guess six 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 in Rancho Santa Fe a place known for Satanism. What does it have to do with Satan? Why do they badmouth me like this? 666, according to the book of Revelations, is a number of Antichrist. And if people would actually read their Bibles carefully, this Christ figure is a complete racist who endorses the God of the Old Testament, who was a mass murderer, a genocidal maniac, the most awful example of how to treat women, complete misogynist, a complete narcissist who would have group activities on the Sabbath day of murdering you if you didn't worship him properly and fulfill his narcissistic desires. But he, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the fucking Jews and Romans to murder so that he could feel appeased enough in his anger against us for not being perfect that he would actually forgive us of our sins using blood magic, ritual fucking satanic sacrifice. I get frustrated with how ignorant people are when they listen to their bullshit that their preachers tell them and the bullshit in the New Testament that tries to tell you that God is good. If God was good, he'd have one more O in his name. <laughs> yeah. So every time I hear someone say good morning, I think of what Madeline says about that on her Galactic Story Teller channel or what she said with me discussing that in our one one of our interviews. The true meaning of mourning. Do you feel good while you're mourning? <laughs> so many words are not what we think they are, the meanings of our terminology is crafted so that we will have the reality and the experience and the programming that those who own our cities, counties, states, countries, pension funds, 
military industrial complex, political parties, churches, and banking system want us to. Yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to put together a good day today because there's a lot of stuff I need to do. Maybe I should send a message to the wife that left when I was having the nervous breakdown and remind her that she covenanted to be there in sickness and in health, as well as poverty or wealth or for richer or for poor, for better or for worse, but in sickness and in health. And the nervous breakdown would fit into that category. And I wonder how she can go on day to day with those children like a fucking reptilian without a conscience, not thinking about how much I suffer every day, missing my family. I can't fathom doing that to somebody that you professed to love and that was faithful and very devoted. I couldn't have done that. I understand she was in an impossible position, but she never fucking came back. She wrote me a couple letters telling me to turn to Jesus. Fuck Jesus. Everything he's ever promised was a goddamn lie. Whether it was in my patriarchal blessing, whether it was in keeping the Sabbath day holy so that you'd have all these economic blessings basically detailed in the, or, or represented in the Old Testament according to the type of agrarian or uh, Shepardic, you know, whatever is it, existence that they had, or the tithing the Mormon church tells you. Or maybe the blessings that Chris Waddell promised. When I asked for a blessing about being able to make enough money to make it with my family since I had acquired three stepdaughters on top of three of my four children that were living with us at the time, hadn't yet had our two. And he said the blessing changed direction. It was profound. I just felt, Brother Dave, impressed to tell you that all of your children, you will see all of them married in the temple of the Lord if you remain, if you just remain faithful. That wasn't going to happen, and it wouldn't fucking make anything better because the temple is just a mind control trap where sacrifices take place. And people's minds are programmed to believe that if they follow these motherfuckers in Salt Lake City, that they'll live happily ever after in the celestial kingdom on their, in their own little fucking Calabian dream. None of that's true. None of the promises in the Book of Mormon are true, or at least those that state, as soon as you keep the commandments, the Lord doth bless you. In fact, that's what caused the Nephite imaginary pride cycle. They kept the commandments and were industrious, and, oh, the Lord blessed them so much every time that they just got so fucking rich that they became too proud and then started having um, class division. Weren't the poor people keeping the commandments or was God selectively blessing them? Even, even, the, even the fucked up prosperity gospel doctrine that they preach I wonder if Joel Osteen studied Mormonism. 
breaks down when you examine it. So I'm now listening. As you can see, I've got my headphones on, trying to stabilize my mood, but not get copyrighted. Listening to the bells and the guitars to the song that Trevor used to come into to close out whoever was the opposing team down at the Murph later became Qualcomm, later got deserted and they went to Petco. The team whose name is a disgrace because it represents fucking Catholic priests. Reminds me of the bishop, my good bishop, who talked shit about me to my wife one time in one of his closed door one-on-one -on -one interviews. He apologized when I confronted him later. That was nice. And he's the one whose dad built the fucking temple. And who was wearing, the bishop wearing the ACDC shirt at fucking Walmart a couple of months ago. And I asked him, ACDC, huh? And he acts like he doesn't recognize me. Maybe he didn't, but my home teacher did like five minutes earlier. He said, yeah, I really like their music. Antichrist, devil's child, is a lie. Jesus and Satan are brothers, just like the Republican and Democrat parties. And create this Hegelian dialectic to draw people into this conflict with each other, but they both serve the same evil God their father, God, if Jesus represents oh, Jesus or Jehovah in Mormonism and Satan re represents Baal, if you look back to the Akkadian gods and Sumerians and Canaanite gods, which the Jews came from in the first place, you find that Baal and Yahweh are brothers, and they have a father. But the Jews later dumped that pantheon and said, we're all about mono-fucking theism. And it's the same game they play out here. They both serve a master behind the scenes. And the Antichrist is just exposing Jesus and the Jewish gods, the Abrahamic gods, let's, let's not leave the Muslims out, all these motherfucking Jews, Christians, and Islamic fundamentalists at the top of the religions who brainwash the rest of the fucking sheeple at the bottom, many of whom are nice folks that just think they're following this fucked up God, are so goddamn ignorant that they construe these evil, murderous gods to be good. I challenge people to read the actual scriptures, not cherry-picked out of your goddamn correlated lessons from the Mormon church and the watchtower and all of you other religions, all you f fucking brainwashed Christians who think that Jesus Christ was an actual person, that some Jew actually named their kid Jesus Christ, rather than him being an allegorical representation of Titus Flavius invented by the Flavian dynasties as authored by their little fucking bots, the ghost writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why do you think, why do you think that the legend of John is that he lived, that he was given immortality? Well, average age, average mortality, you know, average age to die back then was like age 42. When does the first gospel come out? 
roughly 40 years after, after, you know, uh, when they say that the Jesus character died. The other one's much later. John, like 100 years, 100 AD, that's 70 years after the fact. They know nobody's going to believe that this motherfucker was alive. So they say, oh, well, he was immortalized. People that don't study history are doomed to repeat it. That's what they say. And as Hitler said, you tell people something enough, they'll believe just about anything. And that's what you've got if you believe that an all-knowing, unchanging, loving, just, holy, virtuous, perfect God had anything to do with this manual for manipulation, the Old Testament, and the manual for manipulation added to it, the New Testament, to, cre to create the replacement God for Apollo, for the fucking Romans, and to envelop the Jews within the Roman Empire so they would stop their messianic revolutionary cult and just give unto Caesars. What is Caesars? Turn the other cheek and be good little fucking citizens of the New World Order. Forgiving is not a fucking virtue. It's mind control. Rage is power. Being able to have sex with whoever the fuck you want to can empower you. Instead of follow what the Bible says, which fucking demonizes everything that gives you power. Turning your hurt into anger can give you power to actually get shit done, to overcome adversity, and to make changes and improve and to attack your enemies. And in my case, I'm focusing that on the goddamned Mormon church that I hate with all my soul. God is a complete hypocrite. He won't forgive you unless blood is shed. But it says in the Bible, of you it is required to forgive all men. I, the Lord, will forgive whom I will forgive. I believe that's probably in the Doctrine and Covenants, probably in the Bible too. The concept is taught. You're supposed to forgive, give to Caesar what Caesar's, turn the other cheek, just fucking obey, and be a good goddamn slave in the Roman Empire. Fuck that shit. You gotta learn why they demonize shit it's because it empowers you. Why do you think these motherfuckers engage in all in, in, temples are for are for are for sex rituals and for human sacrifice and animal sacrifice and drinking adrenochrome filled blood. That's what fucking gives these people power. That and that and appeasing the demons that empower them and do shit for them. I'm not advocating drinking adrenochrome. I wouldn't mind making some adrenochrome cows out of those fucking apostles, but I'm not into drinking blood. Just not. Not my thing. Not one of those, I guess I'm not in the right fucking bloodline to have that heart of a heart. But what these people thrive on, where they gain their power, those are the things that they tend to demonize. Everything that they tell you that they teach is the opposite. Mormonism says it's there to help families be together forever. No, they fuck up your family. They put tremendous stress on your time and your means, your finances, etc. They brainwash you, make your kids feel like they're pieces of shit if they have a normal development. No, it's all about bowing down and obeying these motherfuckers. And that's what they program you through hypnotic repetition in these hymns, especially the children's ones. Yesterday, I was, was it yesterday? Dude, day before yesterday, I was doing this fucking video and I didn't even, I haven't even published it. I fell asleep while I was 
doing it. I was reading a poem. I was I was reading a post by Christy Johnson regarding, uh, you know, her favorite song used to be because I've been given much with just fucking programs kids to think this imaginary guy Jesus has given them every good thing and so they owe the, him their lives and they need to serve a mission for LDS Inc. Fuck that shit. You want to protect your children? Get them the fuck out of the LDS church. Start telling them that, Sam Young. Protect your children. Get them the fuck out of the LDS church and any of these other goddamn Christian and Abrahamic religions of any type. They're all mind programming to make subservient little fucking sheeple out of you. Do like Rage in the Machine says at the end of the song, Killing in the Name of. Fuck you, Russell Nelson. I won't do what you tell me. That goes for you, Dallin Oaks and David Throat Slitting Bednar. I'm out. You know what to do.